There is no such thing as distance as we know it. Distance, measured in visual terms, is a halfway point between the physical and the purely, for lack of a better word, immaterial realm. When someone becomes distant, she goes to another location. And to do so, she figuratively or literally becomes smaller to an observer who remains behind. On our physical, material plane, extreme manifestations are named distance, and they exist in a perceptibly continuous space. However, the immaterial plane, which intersects with the physical, is made up of what is termed discontinuous space. Let us say you are at point A with one friend and you want to visit another friend at point B which lies at the extreme end of this wide, elongated valley. What you do is say goodbye to friend A and move toward where you believe point B to be located, following a theoretical line. Friend A, unmoving, watches you leave, watches you literally become smaller to his eyes. At some point, we will call it X, you disappear to him altogether, which means he forgets you. At some point, call it Y, which may or may not be the same as Point X, you suddenly appear in the smallest discernible size to friend B and become larger for him until you stand before him in actual size. This means he truly sees you for the first time. It is agreed that a person can change from one location to another by willing it, much as she can make the muscles of her arm move by willing them to. The muscles of the arm often move without conscious participation, as when you find your arm abruptly lifting off a heated coil or in the midst of an obscene gesture you had no intention to make. 
let us postulate that you can will yourself to another location and that it can be accomplished in more than one way. In the, In the physical, physical world, world, movement is accomplished movement by an expenditure accomplished of energy. By an expenditure of energy. A few in our material world are born with the ability to A few will in our themselves material world are born to with the ability to will themselves to another location engaging without engaging the body. The body. During such, such travel, travel, the physical body the remains physical body fixed, remains while a mind conglomerate fixed. travels to another location. While In examining accounts, it seems verifiable that emotions themselves location. perform as fuel. In examining accounts, it seems verifiable that emotions themselves perform as fuel. I have personally experienced this. I have personally experienced will this and will subsequently relate, relate the, the details. details. In, in the immaterial world, the, the total immaterial you world, does in fact get smaller, the total but no energy is consumed does, in the process. In fact, in fact get energy is released to the environment, but no energy increasing is consumed in inverse proportion in the process. to size. People on the plane of mind experience each other intensely in the moment, but there is no distance, per se. Allow me to explain. People on the plane of mind the visual experience sense each other intensely in the moment, but there is no it distance, is per se. If Allow the me to explain. Entire body the visual sense remains intact, the eye, but it is as if the entire body has become to the, the eyes, sensate acuity comparable to the sensate of the acuity of the membrane of a cell. Of a cell. Travel does not exist on the immaterial plane. Rather, we speak of the ability to manifest travel does not exist on the immaterial locations. plane rather we speak of the ability to this manifest at different locations theoretically this means that theoretically that one, one could exist could at an infinite exist number of locations and size an would be infinitely infinite small at each number of locations and size would be infinitely small at each. However, such shrinking creates an influx of energy. Energy 
is such shrinking this creates an influx increase. of energy. Energy is specifically multiple increased by multiple manifestations. That, that is, is the law. law. Physically, human beings are holotropes, beings are maintaining energy holotropes. for movement and growth by Obtaining engulfing or swallowing living matter. By it is true in both states, the physical and the immaterial, living matter. that living entities are never the same it is from true moment in to both moment. States. However, the physical living systems and collectively the comprise the most permanent and that stable living form of matter in the universe. Never On the, the same immaterial plane, yes, which, I as I said, is intimately moment, connected to I the physical, agree. there are no true objects, However, no things, only living willing entities. Collectively, One being can inhabit the, the same space as another. In fact, two or more often merge in, in a concentric arrangement, the universe. infusing but never consuming one another. They On are the called immaterial concentrics. Which, to anyone, as I said, the is whole constellation might be more or less present simultaneously. He means Following is an attempt to describe how it works. Inhabit the same space as another. To any entity's fact, perception, remember that for anyone, others can exist inside it. There is a point a at once central which contains less than nothing. But never Each new level of organization allows expansion from Following that point. Is an there are spheres to of infinite dimension. Other spheres, not infinite, are so indistinct there is a point they barely at persist. Once central Those are the revulsors, which contains the isolates, our greatest nothing. enemies, and oftentimes our dearest loved ones. There are spheres the ones who, for various reasons, won't give you the time dimension. of day. When creatures do not maintain an entirely equal attraction for one another, they may still continue to exist in a coincident field. In such cases, there is no way to determine empirically if other entities are extremely small, meaning if one's self is becoming exceedingly large. Isolate. Distance, as we know it, is our greatest enemy. In such cases, some kind of there is no way to determine empirically 
If other entities are extremely small, or if one's self has become exceedingly violent, algebra cannot solve this dilemma. Algebra, algebra cannot, cannot solve this dilemma. Not the same. On the physical plane, entities not oneself seem predictably Physically, smaller than oneself in terms of value. Physically, the entire universe seems to be outside oneself at any time. Is it because the self perceives space? Is as it something because the into self which the body is born, in no way to space, which it moves, metabolizes, reproduces, into which and the body dies? Is born there is no limit to space. Through which it moves, space is truly discontinuous. Yet to experience the physical as infinite and, and discontinuous dies, constitutes a supreme there mystery is no limit of the mind. To space. Why? Space is truly discontinuous. Yet to experience the physical as infinite and discontinuous on the immaterial plane the entire universe exists within one's own energy membrane bells and why balls. then on the immaterial plane on do the immaterial entities plane, sometimes become small the entire as they universe do with physical exists distance? Is it because you no longer need them or no longer feel them a necessary do part of your life? Sometimes become Going smaller somewhere means that you no longer as they think do about with the person physical or distance. place you wish to leave, but you think instead with this more frequency and duration physical about description another person of a change or of heart. another location. This is simply a, a physical line. description of a change of heart. Being the a straight distance line being the shortest distance between two points, but not so, but easy, not to so obtain easy to obtain in real, in real life. life. Desire itself contraindicates truth, such that in order to get what she needs, she does not always say what she means. The human sensory apparatus has built and makes use of the tool of geometry for moving about physically. However, geometry has no material basis. Geometry exists within the realm of abstract thought. How, on any scale, could each and every being be inside each and every other being? A sphere with an infinite number of points equidistant from all others is the theory behind the fact that people carry around inside their souls every person they have ever loved as well as those they have hated. Death, Death makes, no difference. makes no difference. Those loved or hated ones may carry around inside their minds the lover or the hater. Or they may carry around an entirely different set of individuals, or no one at all. It has been said that people exist who can hold all others alive in their minds. This may be what is meant by samadhi or enlightenment. Not a depletion or an emptying, 
but an active encompassing. What about the people who have no others inside themselves? They are simply at an extreme location. Why? Why? Because they want to be. XYZ of it is the truly, and I mean this in a generous welcome sense. Mm. There is no such thing as distance as we know it. Yes, yes, I see. I thoroughly agree. Yes. This organic red isn't how bad, I must say. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm sorry, but what exactly do you mean? He means that from his standpoint, his lofty height, distance measured in space is not the true insight. Am I getting it? I mean to say, and I say what I mean, that distance as we know it is only a halfway house between the material and, for lack of a better word, the immaterial realm, or to be more... <laughs> the spiritual world. More like the indivisible, I would think. What clogs our mental drain? The, the afterlife? No, that's not it. The immaterial is here, right now, this instant, intersecting the physical. The way my supper! <laughs> <laughs> so much for epistemology. Urging us to endlessly contemplate and display our ignorance, like a paper blown up against a steel yeah. mesh fence. Yeah. As I understand it, People on the immaterial plane experience each other intensely in the moment, but there is no distance per se. The visual remains intact, but it's reduced, atrophied in fact, as if the entire body has become the eyes. Mm. It's something like the sensate acuity of the membrane of a cell. We material living systems are certainly holotropes. Holotropes. Consuming other living systems in order to survive. Yes. It's true that living systems are never the same from moment to moment. Mm. However, and perhaps for that reason alone, it's known that living systems form the most stable matter in the universe. This gin martini is an excellent example. Oh. Juniper, coriander, berries, grain oh. and fruit oh. ripening beneath a quarter moon. Ta-da! <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> mm, have you tried these yummy Portuguese tarts? They're out of this world. I've got my tart, thank you. Do you have your tart? Mm, I've had my tart. It's quite good, I must mm. say. Where did you find the Portuguese tart? I didn't see them. Where or when? Details lend themselves to arbitration. The chair creaks, clothing rips, someone coughs, clears her throat, pops a joint, the radio crackles with static bliss. That static, you know, derives from solar flares. Some seven odd speed of light minutes distance. Or it, it, it could be the, the speeded up sound of nostril hairs growing. Like roars, <laughs> the dishwasher water softener drops into its dish. Mmm. I used to write all sorts of dingly dangly bells and balls and silk scarves under every page of my biography. The <laughs> amplified sound of score page turning. <laughs> I adored it when he knocked over the music stand. <laughs> <laughs> there is no such thing as distance as we know it. In some way, there is plenty of everything for everyone all the time. Hmm. Moon glow glimmering on the harbour water. What he felt when he was inside her. That he named her when he beheld her the first time. Not the same as when he smelled her skin. How he tamed her when he compelled her to him. Whom he blamed when the years took her away. <coughs> we've, we've a bit of a problem. You know, none of us knows who the fuck we're talking to, let alone what we're saying or how to spell it. I've heard it said there are some who carry around inside their minds every person they have ever loved, eh? as well as those they have hated. Yes. Death makes no difference. Beginning again. Some kind of Mobius. The unknowns will go us. Uh, mightn't it be true that those loved and hated ones carry around inside themselves an entirely different set of individuals? Hmm. Or no one at all. Hmm. My God, this entire is mm. It has been said that some exist who can hold all others alive in their minds. An act of encompassing what is meant by samadhi or enlightenment, perhaps? There's no way to determine it even empirically. Alluvial fans evade the moment, as always. But what about those who have no others inside themselves? 
They are simply at a distance. Wh why? Because they want to be. That's all. XYZ of it. A composition for radio, written and produced by Melody Sumner Carnahan for ABC Radio Audio Arts in Sydney, Australia. Principal voices Robert Ashley and Joan LaBarbera. Additional voices Paul Goddard. Peter Cowitz, Sarah Aubrey, and Vanessa Downing, with studio direction by Richard Buckham. Sound engineering, John Jacobs. Sound design, Michael Sumner. by Maya Malpert and Spilt David Smith and James Hurley Recording of Solar Flares by Tom Ashcraft Radio Fireball Observatory Santa Fe, New Mexico